Hi all and welcome to Carport with Craft. In today's video we're going to have a look at my extensive range of finishes what I like to use on some of my projects. This is by no means the full range of finishes that you can get for finishing timber as that would be, well it'd fill my whole workshop. But these are my favourite finishes and I'm going to show you today how I use them, what types of projects I use them on and some little tips and tricks on how I use them. So what we'll do is we'll go straight over to the first one which is wax and I'll show you how I apply it and why I use it. Here we are then guys, this is what I use, Fiddy's Furniture Wax. It's a really good high quality wax what you can purchase here in the UK. And these five litre tins cost about 50 to 53, 54 pounds. And it's a really good wax to use on all types of furniture. And I'll show you the, some of my favorite types, what I like to use it on with some pictures coming up in and around while I'm talking here and how I apply it. Not to get too distracted by all the other finishes on show guys, we are gonna work our way through all of these. So what I'm going to show you first for the finish wax is how to apply it onto any timber really, but in particular what I like to use it on is rustic projects. You can use it on a lot finer projects than this, and I do, and I should put some images up here, but it works absolutely brilliant with say pallet wood, uh, spruce, other cheaper timbers and what are a little bit more rough. So here's a bit of pallet wood, I've sanded it to 80 grit, so it's not ultra smooth at all, and you don't really want it ultra smooth when you apply this. You want it probably 120 grit maximum, but 80 grit is my preferred on a pallet wood project. So if you're making wine racks, uh, boot crates, spear caddies, things like that, or this type of stuff, this works great. What I like to do is keep my, keep my brushes in some white spirits or turpentine. And what that does is it stops them going hard and it keeps them nice and moist and you can use the same ones over and over again. So I always personally wear a pair of gloves when applying this. So what we've got here, we've got some antique brown, uh, we've got some jacobine, and we've got some forest brown. Let's have a look at the jacobine. This seems to be my customer's favourite choice go to at the minute. It's got a quite a strong odour order as well. So I recommend you have your windows, doors open. And I'm not sure if you're supposed to wear a mask. I don't, but probably should do. But I always have doors and windows open. So what happens with this wax normally, especially in cold conditions, it can get quite hard. But when you keep your brushes in a white spirit, it keeps it from going hard and soft. And all I do is apply it with a brush, liberally. And if you want it to be darker, leave it for a few minutes. If you don't, wipe it off straight away with a clean rag. Top tip for clean rags. Get all your old sheets, bedding, stuff like that, cut them up into bits, tell your friends and family, if you're getting rid of any sheets, bed covers, give them to me, uh, because what you need to do with these is as soon as you've used them, that was just my wife bringing me a cup of tea, my cap wood craft mug, yeah, as soon as you've used these rags, they need to be disposed of appropriately, because they can self-combust. You rub it off with a clean rag, and you'll see the type of finish you get, it's a lovely finish, and the wax makes it lovely and smooth. So that's the furniture wax covered, pretty simple, apply with a, a brush or a rag, leave for it for 10 or 15 minutes and buff it off to a sheen. So we'll move on to the next one, which is some dyes, we've got water based dyes and we've got ethanol based dyes. Here we go then guys, these are my go-to dyes. We have some water-based dyes here at the front and then at the back we have an ethanol-based dye. I'll explain the difference between the two and what I prefer to use on what type of project. First one we're going to look at then is the water-based dyes and we'll just go for one of these. We've got an antique pine here and we've got a light oak. So let's go for the antique pine. We're going to apply this to a nice piece of pine Again, you'll want gloves and you'll want either some rag to apply or a brush. Today we'll just dip a bit of rag in it and apply it. Always make sure you give your cans a good stir because the pigment can go to the bottom of the can. So give them a good shake, a good stir. The best way to apply this then onto a piece of pine is to flood it 
on and then wipe it off. I find that's the back, the best way to apply it without getting any blotching. And then I just rub the excess off with the same piece of rag. And you can see there, there's no blotchiness whatsoever. There's no need for a preconditioner with these types of dyes. As long as you apply it right, flood it on and wipe it straight off. Obviously in the UK, we don't have these preconditioners anyway, like they do in the States, but I don't think you need them anyway. So the great thing about this, it's water-based, so you can thin it down if the colour's too strong, and it's really easy to clean off your skin or off brushes and things like that. There's very little odour. Some of the negatives on this water-based dye is, yes, you can get some blotching, but I rarely do when you flood it on and then wipe it straight off. But what it also does is it raises the grain on the wood, so then you will need to denib again, which can then remove some of the dye, because the dye only soaks into the top surface of the timber, the top fibres. So what I like to do is, after I've sanded my piece to say 240 grit, I'll then come back with some water, spray the piece lightly with some water, and then denib again, and let the piece thoroughly dry, and then apply the water-based stain. What'll happen then is, it, the grain will have already raised, and it won't do it again, and if it does, it'll be a lot less. So, that's the water-based dye. We'll now move on to the ethanol-based dye. So I'm looking at the ethanol based product then, some of the downfalls of this stuff is it's very strong in odour. So you definitely need to have your doors and windows open and if it gets on your skin, again, it will it will stain the skin and you'll have to use white spirits or sugar soap, something a bit more aggressive to get it off. So you definitely want to have gloves on again and you definitely want to have your doors and windows open. Some of the positives about this stuff is very little blotching whatsoever. I never get any blotching with this stuff and also doesn't raise the grain whatsoever. So must be something to do with the chemical compound, what's in the ethanol based stuff, but you don't get the raise in the grain problem and it's a bit more hard wearing as well. So I prefer to use this of the water based. This is the only type of thing where I don't prefer an acrylic based um, product and I actually prefer the ethanol based. So we'll apply this walnut Liberon dye to this piece of pine again and we'll see how it looks. We're just going to use the same bit of rag again. Again, you need to apply liberally. I normally apply this with a brush. One of the great things about this as well is the more coats you apply, the darker it gets. A lot of wood dyes, it doesn't matter how many coats you apply, it doesn't get any darker. With this one, you could leave that to dry for five minutes now, and then you could come back, apply another coat, and you'd just get a darker finish. Same sort of tone, just darker. Goes on lovely. No issues whatsoever, apart from a bit of a strong odour. As you can see guys, both of them come out really well on pine. There is some scratches on there, that's just from the 80 grit sandpaper that I used. But no issues whatsoever with blockchain on either of those. So before moving on guys, just a quick overview. Then you can finish these with some either acrylic varnish or polyurethane var varnish. Both of them work fine with the, in my experience, with the water base and the ethanol based. I've not had any issues whatsoever. Uh, it's probably a good idea to stick to oil based with oil based products and water based with water based. But... Applying a varnish on top of these Aviva type, I've had no issues whatsoever. Moving on to the paints then guys, we've got a few accessories here, what we'd like to show you. And we've got an example of what you can achieve. And this however as well, is missing one coat, so there's one more coat to apply. But what we're going to look at is our go-to paints. Now I'd like to highly recommend a couple of channels. Peter Millard at the 10 minute workshop and the Gosforth handyman uh, because everything I know about painting MDF has come from them two guys and they just break it down so simply. It's really easy to use and as long as you use a good quality MDF and you use good quality paints you can achieve a lot. We like to use the brand Leyland and we find it's a really good value for money and it works super well. We always use an undercoat so a primer and here we've got an acrylic based primer and then for the top coat on this box we're using 
an acrylic based eggshell. Eggshell works great on MDF and both of these products we highly recommend. Uh, a little example here is of this cat box and you can see of a great finish we've got on this. And this is standard MDF, it's not, it's not MR MDF, but as long as you sand to 240 grit, use the good quality primer, and then sand in between each coat with 240 grit again, uh, your following coats where you do one coat of primer and three coats of top coat, and then on your last coat of top coat, we use a 400 grit to sand the edges, and it just makes everything great. If you're using an MR MDF, which is a moisture resistant, it works even better. What else we do is, we like to use, just show you a few of these things we use. Some of these little stands here, so if you say paint in the top of this box, you can paint the inside. For instance, like this, you could flip that over and then only the very nib of these pyramids are going to touch your paint. Place it gently on and then you could carry on painting the top and also gets the job done a lot quicker. This one comes with this little device here, so you pop it open, your roller simply pushes inside and it connects back onto it and then when you're finished with it, it comes off and you can stir your roller in there for a good couple of weeks and it still stays wet, the paint, so that's a great time saver. And we always use these Stanley synthetic brushes and we get great results for them. And when we finish painting the product, when we're delivering it, we use these cheap white gloves because when you've got some of this pristine, you don't want to be leaving any fingerprints or marks on it. And we'll, give, we'll wrap this up in a blanket and then we carry it in with these nice, clean, white gloves. So that's the paint quickly covered there. And like I said, if you want to go into any detail about how to apply these, I definitely advise going over to either Gosford Handyman, uh, Andy Mack or Peter Millard. Great videos on how to apply your paint onto MDF. Another great thing about these Leyland acrylic, acrylic paints are easy cleanup. Get it on your hands, washes off easy. Simply rinse the brushes in some warm soapy water and everything's lovely and clean and ready to go again. We're narrowing it down now guys, what we've got left, we've got some spray varnishes, some acrylic varnish, some hard wax oil, some yacht varnish and some oils. Oils are great then for a quick, easy, simple finish. Dead easy to apply, you can apply it with a brush, a foam roller, a rag. Today we're gonna to use a rag. They really do pop the grain lovely and they bring out the beauty of the wood. Here's some of my favorites then. My personal favorite is the Danish oil and that's because this has some varnish in it as well and it really does pop the grain and it gives you that added protection of the varnish. I have teak oil, which is a great quick finish. We have boiled linseed oil. I don't use this as regularly because it gives the timber a bit of a yellowy tint to it. But when I do use it, I normally add some white spirits to thin it down slightly. So we'll go for the boiled linseed oil first. And we'll apply it to this bit of oak. You can see there, it really does pop the grain quite nicely. Not as good as I don't think as the other two, but it does a nice job. One of the negatives about this is it's a bit of a pain to clean up. You need the white spirits, and also it takes a few days to dry, especially in cold conditions. Now we'll have a look at the tea coil. I prefer this one, and we'll apply this one to this mahogany. And you can see that really does bring out the grain beautifully and very easy to apply. It's thinner, it flows into the grain better, I find, and it's great for outside projects. Last but not least then, is the Danish oil. Again there, pop the grain, lovely. And with this you can add several coats, denibbing in between. Bringing out them dovetails, lovely there. As you can see with the Danish oil in guys, you get a lovely finish and you can apply several coats in between when it dries and you can denib it and build that sheen up and build that protection up. But with all the oils, 
They're great at popping grain and very simple, easy to use. The only downside is cleaning your equipment afterwards. You'll need some white spirits. You'll need to soak them overnight. But what I tend to do is use disposable rag, wipe it and dispose of it straight away. So guys, we're coming up to the last few products now. We've got three left to look at, and we're gonna look at this one now, which is a hard wax oil. This is my go-to when I'm doing furniture, uh, tabletops. It's great for tabletops, brings out the grain beautifully, adds a bit of protection, uh, more than the oils, more than wax, uh, but not as much as a varnish. So it's really nice, it does take a bit of maintenance, but all you need is some clear wax, clear furniture wax, and you wipe that on your furniture afterwards and buff it off and it comes up as good as new. Now, most of you have probably seen Osmo, which is really expensive stuff, whereas this stuff what I get, a German brand, I buy this off Amazon, and I can't remember what it is now, it's, well, it's a, it's a fraction of the price of what you pay for the other stuff, and I've used the other stuff, and I've used this, and this is as good, believe me. So it's definitely worth purchasing, and I'll show you now, I'll apply it to a bit of oak, because I normally apply this to my American white oak tabletops, and it brings them out beautifully. With this stuff, guys, a little bit goes a long way. You don't want to over pour it, because if you get too much on, it won't cure, so you want a thin, thin layer. You want a high quality synthetic brush. And again, we use these Stanley brushes. And all you have to do is brush it on. And as you can see straight away, really pops the grain. Nice and thin, work it off, finish it in the same direction. Leave it for five minutes come back and remove any excess whatsoever with a clean, dry rag. You need to remove every last bit of excess, otherwise it won't cure. So you might think it's a bit counterintuitive removing the uh, finish, but it really does help you work it into the grain. And then afterwards, when it's cured, after 24 hours, you can buff it off and it looks great. And that's the excess removed. And you can see, looks lovely. There's the unfinished side. And then again, that's only sanded at 80 grit, that piece of oak. And you get a lovely, nice, clean, crisp finish. Added protection. Again, with this stuff, you're gonna have to use white spirits to clean your brushes and leave them to soak overnight. But it's well worth the effort. And last but not least, then we're gonna look at the varnishes. The first one we're gonna look at is one that I don't use very regularly, but it's great for outdoors projects, and that's yacht varnish. So. As you can imagine, it's got a picture of a ship on there. It's called Yacht Varnish. It's going to be get great outside in all weather conditions. It can take a long while to dry, given the wrong conditions. Even in my workshop, it can take two to three days to dry. It's very potent in, in, its, uh, in its smell, and you'll definitely need doors and windows open, and you'll need to clean your brushes again in white spirits. So I don't use this very often. Normally, if someone wants an outdoor sign for a man cave or a bar or something like that, we'll finish it in this and give it three or four coats so it lasts a long time. But few and far between. But it's good stuff. It just that takes that little bit more of drying time and that little bit of more care when using. Next then, we're going to look at my go-to, what I use for all my furniture, my indoor furniture, and that's a quick drying acrylic based varnish. And you can tell it's acrylic based because when you open it up, it's a, a milky light, light bluey colour. And when you first put it onto your furniture, you'll think, oh, it looks like it's going to turn it blue. But when it dries, it dries clear and you denib in between coats and you get a great finish. It's not as hard wearing as a polyurethane, which is an oil based varnish, but it's easy to clean up because it's acrylic, it's water based, it's easier to apply, it's easier to clean your brushes, uh, it goes on really easily, it's, it's cheaper, it's better for the environment, it's just, I just think it's better in every area and it gives a great amount of protection as well. To apply this then I'll use a good quality synthetic brush, this way you get minimal brush marks in it and deed even in between you get rid of any brush marks what are left behind and it gives a really good quality finish. Next, what we're going to look at then is the spray varnishes and the several different types again. And we've got the yacht type varnish here, but you're definitely going to want a CFC mask on when using this stuff because when it gets in the air, it can be quite harmful to your lungs. 
doors, windows, windows, ventilation, all that sort of stuff. I don't really use this very often at all unless I need to. And if I do, I use it outside. Then we've got the one that I recommend what I use more often, which is a matte varnish. And this is very similar to using my acrylic based uh, varnish. I'll use that for indoor projects. But again, you want a mask on and good ventilation. Uh, it can be quite expensive if you're buying it online and it can also, uh, it doesn't go very far. One of the things I do to make it go on better is I use one of these and I'll show you how this works. So you push it onto your can like that and then when you spray, you've got a trigger here and you can just get a lot better of a motion and an, an even, a more even application when you're using one of these. You can get these from tool station, screw fix, most paint shops, the $1.99, $2.99. So I definitely recommend getting one of these back your life a lot easier. But like I say, these cans can be quite expensive, up to about £15, I think. Uh, I get them a lot cheaper than that because I go to my local high street and down there I can pick these up for like $2.99 and uh, you can't go wrong for a 400ml can for that sort of price. But again, great, the matte varnishes are great for indoor projects and you can get this in satin and gloss as well. The last can we're going to look at then is the high gloss varnish and this one is a polyurethane finish so it's a plasticky finish. Uh, it, it's not as natural looking, so, but what it does give you is a, mass, a vast amount of protection. So this is gonna be the, the, the stuff you're gonna to go to if you're doing something that's gonna get a high amount of traffic, uh, like a toy box, a tabletop or something like that, and it's gonna you know, get abused a bit, you're gonna be throwing your keys down on it and stuff like that. You're gonna to wanna to use this sort of stuff. And again, you'll need the mask, ventilation, and everything. And just by coincidence, the postman's just knocked, knocked on my door and delivered me five cans of this finished wax. Uh, so that was a good happy coincidence. So now I can get on with my next project and I think you'll see there guys that there's a vast amount of finishes out there and this is only a tiny percentage of what you can do. Obviously we haven't looked at French polishing whatsoever. You'll see that I haven't got any shellac here. I haven't had good results with it myself but that's more down to me than the finish itself. Uh, I will practice more with that in the future. But like I say, uh, quick overview, the wax is great for rusted projects all the way up to tabletops and things like that where you want lovely and smooth, easy to apply, great stuff. All the way up to your paints on MDF, finishes like that. Obviously I don't like to paint uh, timber, but I will paint man-made materials and uh, your Leyland products are great for that. And then your, your acrylic varnishes and your uh, oil-based varnishes are great for adding protection. And then your dyes are great for giving you that varied amount of color. And if you use them right, you can get really good results. What you don't wanna do is spend all that time making your project, sanding it to perfection, and then applying these finishes wrong because you just have to take it off and start again. So I hope you've enjoyed that video then today guys, just a quick overview of the types of finishes you can get. If you've enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, comment, share and if you're a regular viewer and you'd like to help the channel financially, you can do that through PayPal, you can do it through Patreon or the join membership on YouTube now. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you on next week's video which is going to be the Toy Box.